Hi guys, today I wanted to just talk through a few things that have been on my mind as far as how to make your style better. Just ways that you could instantly do that and ways that you can start to plan as you're thinking through your lifestyle and where you want your wardrobe to go. I was talking with a few of you guys on Instagram and a lot of you are planning out what you're going to be prioritizing when it comes to your wardrobe this coming year. And so I wanted to sort of get in front of that and just guide you on a few quick points to make today on um, what to keep in mind today and then in the future as well. So the first thing to keep in mind to up your style in 2022 is that you don't need to purchase anything right out of the gate. It's best to look at your own wardrobe and assess what needs to be altered. So this is going to be wonderful because if you are able to pick out anything in your wardrobe and be like, this fits like a glove, it feels like it was tailor-made for me, then then that's a beautiful thing because once you put it on, you're going to look, you know, 10 times better, number one, but also it's going to make it to where um, you are not having to live around little tiny tweaks or little things that you were willing to look past for a while. Now you're able to actually fix those things and it's really important to do that. So if you think of a pair of jeans or pants that you have always had in your collection but you don't reach for them quite as much because they just don't hit you right where they should, then that is something to assess. Take it to a tailor and really it doesn't cost very much at all to do that. So you could either just replace that piece entirely or go into a tailor. I would say for a regular hem, it's going to be like 15 bucks. And from there, it could be a little bit more if you want to reattach the original hem or do anything that's really specific that a tailor will guide you on. I also think that if you look at things like your skirts or your dresses um, or anything like jackets that just could look so much better um, than, you know, by just taking up a little bit. Or even if you were to raise up uh, the shoulder of your sleeve to be just where it hits you in a more natural place, then that will make your clothing look better on you than if you were to go out and buy a new piece. Next, when it actually comes time for you to swap out new pieces, then you definitely want to prioritize the basics first, and then you want to make them elevated basics. So you want to have things at that rate that are better quality than you normally have gotten before. Um, you could even look at what sort of wore down with your old piece. Was it the color that faded? Was it, um, you know, the, the stitching or the zipper or anything? It could be on jeans or t-shirts um, or button-down tops or anything that's really super basic and essential and works hard for your life. Those are the pieces you want to be durable. So the next thing that you do after you've assessed your closet and sort of weeded through them is to actually go to your elevated basics and elevate them. So instead of spending the same amount on several pieces of clothing, buy fewer and better ones and that will extend your life of your closet so much more and you will actually enjoy wearing every single piece. The next thing that you want to prioritize after your basics is your shoes and your bags for everyday use. It's really interesting and I learned this from the book Dress Codes a while back, um, but since I think 1200 was really the dawn of fashion aside from glimpses in history that we can see of when people dressed in a wealthy way um, it's it's something that has always mattered to every society is the shoe the shoe will define everything and if your basics are met then your shoes really will be the thing that draws people's eye and there's so many ways that you could express yourself through your taste in shoes um, depending on your lifestyle and, and that type of thing but also bags. A good bag, if you think about the cost per wear, if you have one good bag and you wear it with everything, every single day, then divide up how many days that you can actually wear that for you know, spanning years and look at how many cents it is per day because it can be so tiny compared to investing in something luxury that's, you know, a sweater. So that is just something to consider when trying to prioritize where to put your money for your wardrobe. Get those essentials, those basics 
you know, made, but then next make things that are everyday use that are luxuries like shoes and bags, and they will elevate every single outfit from there. One last quick point on this. You don't need very many shoes and handbags to make it work for your wardrobe. The right color and the right cut of a bag will make it timeless, and that will be something that extends the life and the cost per wear of those items. The next way to up your style this year is to focus in on textures. This can be a true self-expression. Pick textures that are correct for not only the way that it feels on your skin, but also just defines who you are. If you like to experiment with things that are soft and frilly, um, that could be a way to define you, that it drapes on the body in a way that's different than something that is rugged, right? So you can define and write down and really take time to assess which textures work well for you you, and then it's really not about expanding your color palette. It's really about something that feels like you could see it and you know exactly what that feels like and what it expresses and how it might contradict from one fabric to another within an outfit. So this is a way that you can create some tension um, and can some contrast uh, to your outfit without having to use too much color. If you are working within a budget right now, then texture can be the number one way that it makes every outfit look more expensive. Because if you were to think about a sweater that is you know, a really basic sweater compared to one that has more of a texture, like a rib texture, the rib texture will look like it is more expensive than the basic one without any texture to it. And it's really just this mind game, just like with the shoes, right? It's not that shoes need to be the most expensive item, but they are what people identify with a more expensive item. And texture is just one of those things as well. You'll also wanna make sure that textures meet your lifestyle, which means you don't want something that will stain too easily compared to a different fabric that would have really worked well uh, for your lifestyle and been practical. So that brings me to this next point, which is you wanna make sure that all of the pieces in your wardrobe are actually practical for where you live. Think about the roads that you have to walk on, think about the weather that you are currently existing in wherever you are, and you want your outfit to actually play along with that. The last thing that you wanna do is draw a lot of eyeballs to that poor woman out there who is just you know, stumbling along on a, a, you know, a road that really didn't match her shoes. Um, and you don't want to be the one like me who once wore a white pencil skirt uh, to church one day and I was on my way there and I had this umbrella, right? And it started raining, but the umbrella just, I didn't have control over it. It was so windy. And of course my white pencil skirt was not going to actually hide anything when it came to the imagination with the rain. So I had to walk my sorry self back home and not go to church to let everyone see what underwear I wore that day. So definitely want to always Please make sure that your outfits match what is practical for the weather that day, the weather of that location, and the roads that you're gonna have to walk on in the shoes that you chose. So one really cool way that you can do this is just by mixing something that's casual with something that's more formal or business-like. So think about how a lot of people right now wear like blazers with sneakers. I don't typically like love to wear sneakers myself um, but I do like to have comfortable shoes if I'm going to be walking a lot that day so I do think through what will I be doing and what do I need my outfit to do for me because you never want negative attention you know being drawn to you for something that was you know, a lot more avoidable by just a simple outfit adjustment. So those were my secrets to up your style tenfold this year in 2022. I hope that you're gonna have an amazing year and hopefully these tips help you get on the right path. In a few weeks, I am going to be relaunching my course, which is Master the Art of Personal Style. And I actually hand take you through each one of these sorts of tips and expand on them for about eight hours or so. So if you are interested in learning everything there is to know from my personal take on personal style, then definitely sign up for the waitlist, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description below and in the comment section. And with that, I also would love to hear how your new year is going. So you can let me know in the comments there as well and what you're looking forward to this year. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>